Ground Bet Soup is one of my favorites. Hi, I'm Julie Faith Van Balzer, and words or lettering can add so much to your projects. With me is the fabulous Miss May Flom, and she is, has a way of taking scrapbook techniques onto a canvas. I love this beautiful little canvas you've brought with you. Thank you, Julie. This is, I have to say, maybe one of my favorite projects that I've made in a long time because there's just so much texture and, and fun techniques and play without being a lot of time invested, actually. And if you'd like, we can start off. I can show you how I made my little bird embellishment here. Yes, please. Okay, so I've just got a Stamped bird. I was going to ask you if you had drawn that. I was going to be so impressed. That it's I was beautiful. talented enough. I'm not much on drawing, but I do love to color. So I like to use these are some watercolors that I'm using here, and uh, I like to color my birds with watercolors most especially because I can do so much blending. Oh man, and I love that blended look. With one color, with a bunch of colors, but there's actually even more fun with this. Mm -hmm. um, because in addition to being able to color and add all of these different colors, they're actually really easy to cut out as Ooh, well. As a lot of hand cooking. Coloring, yeah. You can see here, I'm kind of building my color. Mm -hmm. I, like to, I like to, I don't know about you, but I like to start lighter. Yes. And then I can come in with, uh, especially with the watercolors, as you go, if you use a little less water, you a get little a more color. color. You can see how I'm getting a richer blue here. Mm -hmm. And what I really like is mm -hmm. if I... Now, why isn't the stamp ink bleeding when you add the water on ah, top of it? That is because I used an ink that is not reactive when you get it wet or use other liquid mediums on it. And if you'll look, you'll see a waterproof ink on any ink pad that you, if you look at it, it should say, some of them aren't. Mm -hmm. And actually, well, yeah, I like to play with the kind that aren't as well, but many of them are in fact waterproof or water resistant. And so you know, a great tip that somebody gave me once is that if you emboss, with your stamp, then actually when you use watercolor, it's like you get little guidelines so that you always sort of Absolutely, and in fact, I like to there. do that quite a bit. Now before I was joking about the hand cutting, because I actually know the secret, which is we have a bird here that's already that's right. finished, and what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna cut it out electronically, and this makes it so easy to do lots and lots and lots of these. So I'm gonna choose the scan function, and I'm gonna choose the direct cut function. And I'm press start, and then the machine, the built-in scanner inside the machine is gonna scan that, so while you're painting away. Yes. Now I notice that you're actually working that orange paint right over that wet blue. Are you worried about bleeding, or are you using so little water that it doesn't matter. You know, I'm using a little water so it doesn't matter too, too much. But also, I think you know, Julie, I'm just kind of a no rules kind of a person. And you're my I kind just, of girl. I just like to play. And the thing with these watercolors is if it doesn't look good, if it gets to where it's muddy or icky, you can always just really saturate your brush with water and get a lot of water in here and just kind of, even since we know we're gonna be cutting it out, even just kind of scrape it away. So you don't worry at and all don't about, worry about it and over it. It's getting kind of ugly and muddy out here, but that's off of my bird. So you'll never see it. Right, which is you're never gonna see it, you don't have to worry and about it. And now if you look here, I can see my cute little bird on the screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. And now I can see that I'm already getting that outline detected. Now the thing that I like is I can choose whether to cut it exactly right on those lines. And if I zoom in here, you'll be able to see it's gonna cut it out super perfectly or I can choose to add a margin of any size that I want so that it actually leaves me a little bit of a white outline. So May, you're the artist here. You tell me, where do you want it to cut? Do you want it to cut on the line? Do you want it to have a margin? Let's What's your pleasure? Margin. Okay, why don't we give it an 04 margin? That seems about right to me. I'm gonna hit okay. And now I am ready to cut. And of course, I've set my blade and my pressure settings so that it all works out for my machine. You gotta bond with your machine and figure it out. So I'm gonna press start and this is gonna be off and cutting. And what I love is that while this is cutting, you're still water recoloring. I am, I'm so still playing. So that you playing. can do so many other things instead of having to worry about this, Absolutely. right? Absolutely, and the machine, I mean, it takes just so little time to actually set up it's that true. you can set it up quickly and then get back to your coloring. And man, did that cut it, fast. It, That's faster me. than me with scissors. It's true, so I'm gonna peel this out and I'm going to just pop this right out. And wow, this is some thick paper. What kind of paper did you use? Is it watercolor it is, paper? It's just a really thick, all-purpose 
heavy paper. Heavy paper. Yes. Man, that came out beautifully with that gorgeous little margin. I'm going to give that to you. And now I wanted to talk about this fabulous word embellishment that you have on there. Yes. It's so shiny and gorgeous. And you, this is your handwriting, it which is. I think is beautiful. And you actually have a very different way of using your handwriting than I do. I want you to tell us exactly how you got that word. Absolutely. So my handwriting, I actually don't think is good in the sense really? that I can really not ever get my handwriting right the first time. If I'm trying to make uh, a word that's really going to be like stand out and be really a feature focus. So what I do, you can see here I've got a very thin line. I just sketched, just no pressure, just how I would write it. Mm -hmm. And then what I've done, you can see here how thick it is. Yeah. I'm going back in and I will draw a little line and then I will fill it in. You could use a big pen. I don't like to because I'm not good with it that way. I'm better with kind of a medium tip pen and then I will go in and fill in. And my big, big tip here is you don't want to make it the size you actually think you want to cut out. You want to make it slightly thicker. Interesting. You do. You want to make it slightly thicker because once it actually gets cut out and you see it all cut out, it, it will feel like it's skinnier. It loses weight. I ah. wish it was that easy for me, <laughs> but it, uh, it loses weight, so to speak, when you actually scan it. So you can see the great thing about this is as I'm going along, if I have a bad spot or if a rough spot, I can just really quickly You know what I love about right scrapbooking and making and crafting is that there's so many ways to get the result you want, something that makes you feel comfortable doing it your way. And I know that you, um, if we look back down here at some of these finished ones, yes. not only only is this cut out and gorgeous, but it's also super shiny. So I know you told me the beginning of the process, of course, is that you scan yes. the finished thing into the machine and then you cut it out of any kind of paper that you any want. Any material that you want. And that's how you got this. That is correct. Okay, but what do we do next? Now this is, this you can do absolutely anything with and I think it's so much fun because I mean, you, the possibilities are endless. What I like to do is I like to take a stamp, any stamp at all, but I think most especially stamps that have smaller designs. I love polka dots, by the way. I always think uh, they're me too. always awesome. And there's so many ways to use them. So just some small stamp, mm -hmm. a small script, a small polka dot, and I will just stamp right onto my cut out word. And I suppose you could do this before you cut it. I like to do it after because I like to be able to see exactly where I'm stamping. And you can see how we've got super all our polka glitzy. dots. And, and to make seconds. it super shiny, you're going to use a dimensional adhesive yes, I on am. top of it, yes, which I makes am. it super easy. It's got that needle tip. You put it right out. You and if we right look on. back at the finished ones here, you can see how shiny and fabulous those yep. polka dots make such a fabulous difference. Thank you, May. Thank Great you techniques me. to take our scrapbook pages, put them on the wall, and of course, use your handwriting because it's all about the words.